The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Hello, I'm David, and welcome to the Electronics Inside, the show where we tear down toys, tools, and appliances just to find out what's inside. Today, we're going to be tearing down the newly released Xbox One S All Digital. Let's get started. Now, just for comparison, I've got the original Xbox, which as you can see is already looking monstrous. I think most people already knew that. From going from the Xbox to the One S was a big change. Just the sheer size of it is enormous. But going from the Xbox One S to the Xbox One S all digital, very, very similar. They've made a few obvious changes. Obviously the disc is gone. I don't know why I hadn't really made the association, but of course the eject button has gone as well. Um, other than that, pretty much on all sides, they are identical. They've still got all the same input and output on the rear plate, all in exactly the same place. Nothing on that front has changed whatsoever. One thing I was curious about is, I wonder if they've made any significant power savings by removing the disk drive. Uh, externally, they seem to be the same power supply. We'll take a look on the DC side in once we get in there, just to see if there's anything different. So on the bottom, you've got Hello from Seattle, and a model number. I would have expected the Xbox One S and the One S All Digital to have a different model number. According to the imprint on the bottom, they are both model 1681. I think the obvious place to start, assuming this is built like the uh, One S, which, let's face it, it really is. I guess we'll start by unclipping the black base. There's the base off. And of course, as always, the Xbox X. Uh, I don't suppose that actually this plate is any different. I've got the manufacturing date here of Rev3 12th of December 18. I can't see any reason why this couldn't be the same production run for an Xbox One S as the Xbox One S all digital. So probably was. Let's get started on the screws. I still own and use the uh, original Xbox, which electronically is still virtually identical to this, uh, as far as I can tell. It still uses the same eight core APU based on the Jaguar architecture. They both still have eight gig of RAM. So there shouldn't be that much in terms of performance difference. This has got a different HDMI spec uh, to support the 4K output. And it also has an ever so slightly overclocked graphics chip in it. I'm assuming that is to make the 4K that you can watch on it, which would be 4K streaming video and 4K for the home screen and the menus run a little bit smoother. Now, at this point, as I just go through taking out a mammoth number of screws, what do we think they have done with the space where the drive used to be? Is it just a big empty void? Is it gonna have something else in it? Are they going to be looking at a cheaper spinning hard drive and that, to utilize the space? Are they still gonna have an unpopulated header or are they gonna have the connector there? Could you theoretically mod a disk drive back into this Xbox? It's tough to work out. The difference between the bespoking a board versus the cost of not populating something. I really feel like they'll offset each other. So I really can't make any clear distinction of which way they'll have gone. Don't want to damage any of the uh, components that are outside the RF shield. Okay, the top half out. So on the outside, on the front, you've got the wireless controller, the power switch, which is again a tack switch, uh, and the connect switch, which are all tacked on. Oh look. <laughs> First, there's still an eject button on the hardware. You can still see that eject ready for where the disc would be. And this pressing on the front where the disc drive would be protruding from the RF shield is a completely distinct piece of metal. They've not made a new press for this. They've just added a new one. And I've got to say, it's rough. The corners on that and the edges in the finish are not consistent with the quality on the rest of the pressings. They've uh, gone to market quickly with this. And here on the side, you've got the RF chip the wireless connectivity. Different size torque screw. I definitely feel like the eject button is our first clue for how this has been assembled and what the differences we're likely to find. Probably much more expensive to set up a process and manufacturing with a different board than it was just to keep the components on there, even though they're now completely superfluous. There you go, there's the front button. So let's try and get in to the RF shield now, which means we've got to remove these additional screws, which are completely new to this model. Yep, there's the new pressing. 
Yeah, the edges and the corners are much, much sharper than any of the edges on the original pressings. And I've got to say, it's actually slightly thinner gauge steel. Oh, big moment. Top of the RF shield is now free. Yep, just big space. They haven't... That's strange. <laughs> yeah, there's just like a superfluous bit of plastic. I appreciate the top of this peg here um, actually protrudes and holds up the RF shield in the middle, but I wouldn't have thought it was that flexible that it needed the support of this plastic. Uh, you can clearly see where this holds up the Blu-ray drive in the original Xbox One S, or the discs. One well, Xbox One S, I guess I should call it. So that is a very interesting inclusion. That sort of reminds me of, you know, in pizza boxes, you get the little uh, three-pronged table in the middle. So they're still using the same one terabyte Seagate drive. Everything's nicely labeled, power, hard drive, and fan, just in case you'd forgotten or didn't know. Toolless removal. I don't know why, I'm a little bit disappointed that having removed the physical spinning optical drive, that they haven't sort of chosen or taken the opportunity to go for a, um, a solid state drive. I like the little sort of bespoke Xbox hard drive connector. It's a little neat touch. I hold it in the chassis nicely. So what about the power supply? Based on everything we've seen so far. Okay, part three. And sure enough, it is the exact same 120 watt DC supply. So nothing's changed there. In case anybody was wondering, yes, you still have a serial ATA port there. You would never be able to connect a normal serial ATA drive up to it, but if you had a dead Xbox One S, you could rescue the drive out of there. If you had an Xbox One S, this is a really good way of actually um, getting everything back working again. Cheaper way of getting donor parts that are new, I guess. Last physical parts to be removed are the heatsink and the fan. Ooh, let's get the fan off the heatsink. Nice machined block of alley. That's a change. Um, I seem to remember the last Xbox One S had a copper contact plate with heat pipes in it. This is just a single machined block of aluminium. So yeah, that's a change. There's a different heatsink design. There you go. There is the X from the Xbox. Guess that makes it just a box now. And the CPU and the new single piece machined aluminium heatsink. Um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Yep, still 8 gig of RAM. That is exactly the same motherboard that you would find in an Xbox One S. The biggest single differences are new heatsink design, which I really hadn't expected, and a blanking plate. Otherwise, they're exactly the same. I've really enjoyed seeing inside the Xbox One S all digital. Uh, I'm still not quite sure whether it's a sneak preview of the next generation or whether it's just a big public beta test. But if you've enjoyed it and you have an idea for a teardown, let us know over at the Element 14 community at element14.com forward slash the electronics inside. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.